Okay, Throwback Thursday. Here are the answers to the 20 questions. Now, the first 10 questions are true, false. Question one says the ratio of hearts to stars is 4 to 10. There are, as we can see here, 4 hearts and 10 stars. So, yeah, that's true. The ratio of hearts to stars is 4 to 10, and therefore 40% are hearts. And this is where the answer is false, and here's why. When you learned about ratios and part to part, part to whole ratios, a part to whole ratio is the only type of ratio that can express percentages. And in this particular picture, the whole is not 10, but the whole is 14. So four, st four hearts out of 14 shapes does not equal 50% or 40%, sorry. It equals, I don't know, roughly 30 some percent, but definitely not 40%. So the answer is false. Question two, a man runs 100 meters in 10 seconds. He is running faster than 30 kilometers an hour. Again, this is right out of our proportional reason, ratio and rate unit. So we're first going to see how fast, how, how far does he run in one minute, which would be a good one. Now you could have broken it down by dividing it by 10 to get one second and then multiplied it by 60 to get one minute. But the easier way to do it is simply to multiply both parts by 6 to get your minute. And that would be 600 meters in one minute. If he was running at a rate of 100 meters in 10 seconds, then he would be running at a rate of 600 meters in one minute. And if he was doing that in one hour, which is of course 60 minutes, he would be running 36,000 meters in an hour. Now 36,000 meters, there are 1,000 meters, a thousand meters in one kilometer. So therefore, he is running 36 kilometers per hour. So he is running faster than 30 kilometers an hour is true. He is actually running at a rate of 36 kilometers an hour. Question three, half a percent of $60 is $30. Now the answer for this one is false. And here's why. A half of $60 and a half percent of $60 are not the same thing. They do not equal each other. They're not the same. Because a half of $60 is really 50%. And a half percent is really less than 1%. It's actually a half percent. So a lot of people misinterpret a half percent to mean 50%, and they thought it was $30, which it's not. A half percent. As we learned before, half percent, we have to move our decimal for a half percent, move our decimal three times. So once for 10%, twice for 1%, three times for a half a percent. So our actual answer is half percent of $60 is really six cents, which is not the same answer. Question four, 120% as a decimal is zero decimal one two zero. The answer again is false, and here's why. 120% is really the same thing as 120 out of 100, which is an improper fraction, which is a mixed fraction, would be 1 and 2 or 20 hundredths, which as a decimal is 1 and 20 hundredths, or if you want to reduce it to lowest terms, 1 and 2, so 2 tenths. So 120% is 1 decimal 2 as a decimal, not. This is actually 12 hundredths, right? Get rid of that insignificant zero. It's really 12 hundredths, which is 12%, not 120%. Question five, it says, uh, based on tight divided by 2 plus 3 LWs is a formula one could use to calculate the surface area of a triangular prism. Well, if you draw the net of your triangular prism, remember when we did nets, we see there's five faces. This is a rectangle, this is a rectangle, this is a rectangle, this is a triangle, and this is a triangle. So our five faces, what's wrong about this formula, and a lot of people probably saw it after they put their answer is, it's not one, but it's two triangles, one here and one here. So you're missing your coefficient of two to describe the two triangles that made up the surface area. So if you said true, you're wrong, the answer is false, because it's missing the two. Question six, if the height of a cube doubles, so does the surface area. So for this question, just choose two cubes. I'm going to 
going to draw two cubes, one slightly larger than the other. I'm going to call this one two. And since the height is going to double, I'm going to call this one four. Okay. Now the surface area of this cube, the surface area is there are six faces. Each one is side squared. So there are six faces that have an area of four. So the total surface area of this one is 24 units. Over here, we still have the same formula, six side squared. There are six squares that make up the surface area. There are six that have a surface area of 16 each because it's four times four, which is 96 square units. So when I doubled the height, I noticed that between 24 and 96, the surface area did not double. So therefore, the answer is false. When you double the height of a cube, it does not double the surface area. Question seven is probably the easier one on the test. It says that 17 thirds is greater than five, and this isn't even a grade eight question. This is a grade seven question, probably even a grade six question if you go back far enough. So 17 thirds is an improper fraction. As a mixed fraction, it's five and two thirds. And then if I rewrote this question as five and two thirds is greater than five, I would say, yeah, that's true. So that's why the answer is true. Five and two thirds is greater than five. Question eight is a division of fractions compared to a multiplication of fractions. And it says, I'll just rewrite this down here and bring it down. It says that three quarters divided by one and a half is the same value as three quarters times two thirds. Well, when we studied division of fractions, we realized that when you divide mixed fractions, you should change them to improper. And the simplest way to get the answer is to change the division to multiplication and use the reciprocal. And if we look at this, those two things are the same thing. So yes, it is true. Those two expressions will have the same value. But the other thing you could have done is solve it, but probably if you did solve it, you were going to do this anyway, so it didn't matter. Question 9 is a cube with an edge length of 4 centimeters. Uh, we'll have the same number for its surface area as its volume. Now let's draw this particular cube. We already did this one in the last question. 4, 4, and 4. So for surface area, we get 6 times 4 squared, or 6 times 16, or 96 cubic, or sorry, square centimeters of surface area. For its volume, we're going to use side squared times height, which is the formula for volume. 4 squared times 4, or 16 times 4, that gives you 60. I made a mistake there. 16 times 4 is 64. So are they the same thing? No, they are not. So the answer is false. Let me make sure here. Next question is an integer question with a greater than sign in between them. So it says the difference between 10 and negative 20 is greater than negative 4 times negative 8. So when you subtract integers, the easiest thing is to change it to addition and use the opposite of that. So 10 plus 20 is actually 30. So this side has a value of 30. And 4 times 8 is 32. Negative times a negative is a positive, that's a 2. So is 30 greater than 32? No, it's not. So therefore, the answer for 10 is false. Unfortunately, we're done with the true-false because I think a lot of people screwed those up, but that's okay. Because we're on to question 11, which is kind of easy, but kind of not. It takes a lot of reading. It says, a man takes a shortcut across a large field. So here's your field, right here. And the man takes the shortcut across the field. How much shorter is it from A to B uh, using that shortcut than if he went around the field from A to B? So the first thing we have to realize is that shape I just drew, that's actually a right triangle. Isn't it? Okay? There's our right triangle. I'll get rid of the circle because we don't need it, I think. So get rid of the circle. Put my measurements in here. And you can either use a formula or you can just draw squares. I prefer this method here, so I'm going to draw the square. The area of the square is 4, the area of the square is 16, and Pythagoras said the sum of the areas of the squares attached to the legs, which is this one and this one, 
of a right triangle is equal to the area of the square attached to the hypotenuse. So the area of these two squares is 16 and 4, which means this one is 20. And therefore, the side length of a square whose area is 20 will be the square root of 20, which I'm going to grab my calculator and put in the square root of 20. It's 4.47, I think, wherever it is. Square root button is 4.472 which we're going to round to the nearest tenth, which will be 4.5 kilometers. So the, the guy that went from A to B across the field traveled 4.5 kilometers. The guy that went around the outside of the field traveled 6 kilometers. So the guy that made the shortcut, he walked 1.5 less kilometers, which is your answer, 1.5. Question 12 another Pythagoras question, but a little variation, one that we have never seen before. I'm going to put my squares on, and then I'm going to put my information on. And a lot of people screwed this up. So the length of this is 8, so the area of this square is 64. I don't know the base, so I'm going to put x there. But what I do know about the hypotenuse is it's square root of 164. Now some people took the calculator and did the square root of 164 and got like 12 decimal 8 or something like that, or 12 decimal 4, or whatever it happened to be. But you don't actually have to do it. If you know the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 164, then you know the area of the square had to be 164, because the area of a square is 164, its side length will be the square root of 164. We're usually used to just plopping in that number and using it, but we don't need to. What we really need is this. So now we know one of the legs area, we don't know this area, and we do know this. And Pythagoras said this plus this equals this, which means this one has to have an area of 100. And if it has an area of 100, then the side length must be 10, but we're not done. Now we know the triangle, and it says what is the area of the triangle? This is your base, I'll do it in red. This is your base, this is your height. So base times height divided by 2 is the formula. 10 times 8 divided by 2, 80 divided by 2, the area of the triangle is 40 square meters. So your answer is 40. Question 13 says, an ice cube has a volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters. And again, this is a tricky question. 1,000 cubic centimeters is its volume. Now, we know that it had to be x times x times x, because all x's are the same thing. So what number multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself, gives you 1,000? So if you know cube root, you could get the answer. So I could have, none of us know this, but if you took your calculator, you can go 1,000. And right over here, uh, I wonder if I can circle it with a, uh, let's see if I can do it. Cube root, see right here. See that button right there? It's yellow. If I press that button, it says the cube root, not the square root. And if I press it, it says the cube root of 1,000 is 10. And what that means is that 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10 would have been one way to get 1,000. So therefore, the edge length of the cube, cube must have been 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. Question 14 says, what is the volume of a cylinder whose height is 20 and its diameter is 6? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw it. Right? See if you can get your head around what it looks like. The height is 20 centimeters. The diameter is 6 centimeters. Okay, so we're going to use our formula. Now again, volume. A lot of kids get volume formulas and, and surface area formulas confused. Remember, volume formulas are really easy. It's always the area of the base multiplied by the height of the prism. It doesn't matter if it's a rectangular prism, a cube, it's always the same thing. All right? So the area of the base is going to be a circle, so I'm going to use pi r squared, because that's the area of the base, because it's a circular base, multiplied by the height of the prism, which is going to be this measure right here. So pi, it says, use pi is 3.14, so we'll do that. Now we haven't done it in the past, but whatever. And it says the radius squared. Well, the diameter is 6. So the radius is half a diameter squared multiplied by the height of the prism, which is 20. Don't forget when you simplify uh, anything using order of operations, the first thing you have to do is exponents. So 3.14 multiplied by 3 squared. There's still some kids who think 3 squared is 6, but it's 9. 
multiply by 20. Take my calculator, which is somewhere, and go 3.14 multiplied by 9, 28.26. 28.26. Don't forget what that measurement means. That's what the area of this base means. You multiply it by 20 levels because there are 20 circular levels that each are one centimeter high. When I multiply that by 20, uh, where is it? So 28.26 multiplied by 20, 565.2. 565.2 cubic centimeters uh, would be the volume of this prism. So there's 28.26 on the first level, 28.26 on the second level, and there are 20 centimeter levels all the way up, which means the total volume is 565.2. Question 15 says, what is the surface area of this rectangular prism? This one's a trickier one because I actually took my 5 and put it up there as opposed to where I normally put it, which is down here. And I put my 2 over here, and normally I put it over here. So for a lot of people, they're saying, I don't see the numbers, but that's really what it was. So for most of us, we prefer the net. So we're going to draw my net of this particular one. I open up this rectangular prism. I'm actually going to put bottom top, front, back, uh, right, and left. I'm just going to keep my net organized so I know what I'm looking for. The bottom of this one is right here. It is made up of a rectangle, which is 4 by 5, so its area is 20. And we know that the top is also 20. The right-hand side is 4 and 2, which means it's... Uh, four this way and two this way or whatever. I don't know if I have that right. But the area is eight and the area this is eight. And then the front is right here, which is five by ten or five by two, which is ten square meters and ten square meters. Add those all up, you get 30, 60, 76 square meters. Okay. So when you add those all together you get 76 square meters. All right. Next question. Uh, this is actually kind of an easy question. I think most people got this one right. It's just basically two integers. It says, if I'm reading it, I want to read it as 2 multiplied by negative 5, take away 3 times 10. So a bed mass thinks is do all your multiplications first. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. That's the product of 2 and negative 5. Take away whatever 3 times 10 is. And 3 times 10 is positive 30. Now, I don't have to put it in brackets, but I like to. So now it says instead of 2 times negative 5, take away 3 times 10. It says negative 10, take away 30. The easiest way to subtract integers is to change to addition. It's just the inverse, or it's the opposite, excuse me, of the second integer. So I have the sum of negative 10 and negative 30, which is negative 40. So the answer for that one is negative 40. Question 17. A lot of people struggle with this one. They're like, oh my God, how do you do this one? It says 1, 5, 9, 13. People say, well, the 100th number has got to be 100. No, it doesn't. you got to make a table of values. Now I'm going to put X and Y, even though it doesn't have to be. I'm going to put, this one represents the uh, number in the sequence. The number in the sequence. And this one's going to be the value. I'm going to redefine it. So X and Y, I'm still going to keep X and Y. I could have changed it to N and B if I wanted to, but X and Y is fine. So the first number, the second number, the third number, the fourth number, I suppose. What are the values? Well, the first number's value is 5, or it's 1, sorry. Move this one down. The first number's value is 1, the second number's value is 5, and 9, and then 13. And we want to know if this is true, then what's the 100th value, the 100th number in the sequence is value. So again, we use our understanding of how to get the equation that matches it. The difference here is 4, which means in our equation, 4 will be our coefficient. Substitute the first ordered pair, in this particular case, is 1 and 1. Replace x with 1 and y with 1. And ask yourself, is 4 equal to y, or 1, excuse me? No. I have to subtract 3, which means I now know what my constant is. It's minus 3. So now I have my equation. Substitute 100, which is what I need to find, for the x in my equation that matches the table of values. 4 times 100 minus 
minus 3 equals y, 400 minus 3 equals y, 397 equals y, and that's the value of 300. Or is it? I think we're saying, it seems to me it's supposed to be plus 5 times, times 4 minus 3 times 4 minus 3. Yeah, I think that's right. I think 397. I think that's right. Let me just double check here. Uh, yeah, it is. It's 397. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. Question 18 is an algebra question using distributive property. And when you use distributive property, remember there's two ways you can do it. You can use expansion, which would be negative 4 times x minus 2 plus negative 16, and that would multiply each term inside the brackets by negative 4. Negative 4x. A negative 4 times a negative 2 is a positive 8, so my constant is a positive 8. And now I have a two-step algebraic equation. Subtract 8 from both sides. Negative 4x equals negative 24. Divide by negative 4. x equals a positive 6 because a negative divided by a negative is positive. But the other way you could have done it is to simply divide both sides by negative 4 because instead of having negative 4 groups of x minus 2, by dividing by negative 4, you have one group of x minus 2. Divide this side by negative 4. You get a positive 4 because 16 divided by 4 is 4. Same sign's negative. Add 2 to both sides. x still equals 6. Okay, so we when we studied this, well, two, three months ago, whenever it was, uh, we said that the easier way when you have distributive property is to divide both sides by that number. Uh, but if you've forgotten, the expansion is still a very valid way of doing it. Getting towards the end, question 19 is another easier version of question 18. It's already expanded for you. But the tricky part is your, your variable is on the uh, right-hand side this time. Your constant is the first term, and normally it's the second term. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of my constant, and I want to add 6 to both sides. So that gets rid of it. Over here we have 16. But over here, don't forget, you still have a negative 4x. Divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4. Okay? Don't forget, in algebraic equations, it's always easy to get rid of your constant first. In grade 9, you're going to learn you don't have to get rid of your constant first. You can divide a whole bunch of different ways, but that way is the most efficient for grade 8. And your last question of your, sh of your uh, throwback Thursday is a linear relationship. It gives you a graph that says, what is the y value when x is 100? Well, this is tricky because we haven't seen these for a while. So again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say to myself, I know how to do this when it's a table of values. So I'm gonna see if I can make a table of values for this. This time, here's my x-axis, and I have these. So I have to say, which ones do I know? Well, I know this one, and I know this one, and I know this one. I know those three points. This one, x is zero. And when x is zero, the y value is five. This one, when x is 1, y is 7. And this one, when x is 2, y is 9. So now I have a table of values. From a table of values, I can find an equation. And from an equation, I can find a missing value. So same thing we did before. The difference here is 2. The difference here is 1. So my coefficient in my equation will be the 2 divided by 1, which is 2. Take your first ordered pair, substitute it in. So x is 0, y is 5. Does 0 equal 5? No. That means I have to add 5 to make them equal. Add 5. Add 5. Now I have my equation. 2x plus 5 equals y. Substitute this into my equation. 2 times 100 plus 5 is 200 plus 5. y must equal 205, which is your answer. Okay? Don't fret if you didn't do so well. Hopefully the video helped you. Uh, next Friday, no, sorry, next Thursday we'll be doing another one. So please, hopefully this tutorial will help you remember the things you've forgotten this time, and next time you won't be so apt to make mistakes.